On this week's show, how will the changes to capital gains tax affect property investors? And we're gonna be answering all of your property and business related questions in today's Q&A session. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hey, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. Good, good, good. Glad to have you back. I know. Last week I had to do it with, uh, with uh, Ricky. Um, he stepped how, in. how depressing for you? Do you know it wasn't the same? It, I said to him afterwards, I said it really wasn't the same because like, I think we bring out the best in each other, um, or the worst in some cases, oh. but um, yeah, we bring out the banter and it, it just wasn't, although I have lots of banter with Ricky, we have a great time. Um, it, do you know what? He done an amazing job stepping in last minute. Um, but it just wasn't the the same without old Russell Leeds on the podcast. I was I was reading some of the reviews of our podcast. Oh, overall, okay. overall, we've got quite a good score. We but, have, yeah. But there there, there were some. Uh, let me see if I can find. Let me see if I can find some. The, of them. the thing is, uh, a lot of our, our some of our viewers they just missed the whole point of this podcast. Like when we set this podcast up, it was set up purely uh, as two guys. Like they're having a pint in a pub and they're just chatting about business and property. It's not like our, okay, so this is property and this is what we're gonna do. We don't want it to be boring. We want it to be fun. We want it to have a bit of a, a bit of banter. Um, yeah. And that's, that, so some people just truly miss the point. And do you know what? I'm glad they've left and gone to watch all the boring podcasts. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna skip through the good ones, but th- thank you very much to Andrew Tanby. You left us a good review, yeah, five yeah. star regular. Thank you, Andrew, appreciate it. Cheers, man. Uh, Amelia, yeah, thanks, Amelia. Uh, James, thank you. There's a lot, a lot Purple Rain Shadow, appreciate it, Purple Rain Shadow, loads of good ones. Yeah, Informative yeah. yet hilarious, lots of good ones. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus in on the, uh, the this ones. one particularly made me laugh. They like you. All right, okay. They just don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is from, they've called themselves a noise dare. A what? A noise dare. Uh, it's like Alistair. Alistair, yeah, but yeah. A noise dare. I've never seen this one before. It's a clever, clever play on, on words on, go here. Go on. This is from uh, Ellie, Ellie Joe, who's okay. 29. So the Scottish guy, yeah. I'm assuming that's you. Is informative and easy to listen to. Would be miles better with just him. <laughs> God. The Brummie has the worst crack in the world, as in like jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worst crack in the world. Just one of those annoying men that think they're funny. <laughs> Spelt there wrong. Uh, just, to, just to annoy you just, there. Just to annoy you, okay. You, it should be they are, T H E Y, apostrophe R E, but whatever. Uh, don't get me wrong, he is knowledgeable on the subject and does have some credible information, but then he ruins it with some awful banter or attempting to rip the more intelligent man. <laughs> <laughs> yes! That's what it's about, people! <laughs> um, another one, this is actually dissing you now. Uh, no, bad no. advice. About what? About it's what? something that you've said on one of the shows Probably, a while ago. but... I was really disappointed. Was he? Okay, cool. When the advice was given that you can use... Well, he didn't actually say this. Oh, whatever. use bounce back loans. You can use bounce back loans. Oh, you clearly didn't listen, my friend. You clearly didn't listen. You, you heard what you wanted to hear. I have never once advised anyone to use a bounce back loan to buy property. However, if you are in a property business and your business has been adversely affected by the COVID-19 outbreak, a bounce back loan is there to help your business get back on its feet. So if, as I said back in the day when I first talked about this, I said, if you're a florist and you go out and get a bounce back loan and invest it in property, then that is a misuse of a bounce back loan. But if you are a property buying company and the funds have dried up, let me give you an example. So for instance, I was in the middle of buying a property during COVID-19, my loan to value rate went from 85% down to 65%. So I have been adversely affected. So I am perfectly within my rights and legal rights to use part of that bounce back loan to uplift that LTV borrowing, okay? So understand what I'm saying, listen to what I'm saying, and do you know what? If you don't like the advice, get it from somewhere else, my friend. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, 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 yeah. So, what have you been? You've been at Bedford. You've had. You were just telling me. I said, don't, don't tell me now. Tell me on the show. Yeah, yeah. You've had a bit of annoying news. Uh, it's not annoying. It's just set us back a little bit. Um, was it annoying stair news? It was annoying <laughs> stair news. <laughs> uh, no, it's just issues with building, building regs and planning and all that. Well, actually, building regs, not planning at the minute. It just building shows, regs. by the way. Basically, they got it wrong. But building regs got it wrong, and it cost us a little bit of money. Um, and it's just really frustrating. So what happened was we've got. Uh, five bedrooms all en suite. So we have to, at some point, 
get the waste pipe from one end of the house to the main waste stack. Now you've got two options, you can either go on the outside of the building and go round, which is not pretty, uh, or you can do what we've done, you can take the pipe down and then you can go underneath the floor and run an underground waste, or underground uh, waste pipe, waste soil pipe. Um, and obviously that needs uh, to pass building regs because it has to be laid properly, it has to be flowed properly so it flows and it's not level, it has to be sat on the right materials with the right membranes, all that sort of stuff. Now when building regs uh, come out and saw it and they said, yeah, it's not a problem, just do that. They then come out again, mid, mid work and said you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, you need to change it. So the plumbers ripped it all back out, even though they knew they didn't have to do this, but building regs told them they had to, the plumbers took it all back out, reinstalled it how they wanted, but that meant they had to cut more of the floor away. Now I'm now a thousand pound further into this because there was charges for them doing that work. And then building regs come back out again today uh, to sign it all off and it was a different person and they said, why did you do that? And we were like, well, because you, your team told us to do that. And he yeah. said, well, you didn't need to do that. It's a waste of money. He goes, it was perfect how you had it. And it was just so goddamn frustrating. What they were telling us was that in the middle of the kitchen, we have to have a, um, a rod and hole, um, sort of a manhole, so that they can open it up and then they can get rods in there if it ever gets blocked. Yeah, because who, then, who, doesn't, who, who doesn't want sewage right, in Exactly. Kitchen? That means you'd have an unsealed sewage pipe going through the middle of your kitchen. It just doesn't it make doesn't logical it. sense. What's um, the lesson from this for anyone, you know, if, if they get told to do something, are you gonna challenge building Oh, hundred percent. Well, the reason, I wasn't made aware of this until after, afterwards, okay? Now, if the, if the builders had come to me and said, Alsa, this is what they've said, um, then we would have sorted it out, but the, the plumbers took it upon themselves to just fix it, thinking they would save me a bit of headache, which is fine, I get that, and I'm not yeah. gonna blame them. Um, but I think in future it's really, really important that you have that if there's a that 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 that, that sort of relationship where with they the come to you with yeah with the plumber. So you say to the plumber, listen, if there's any changes, make me know. Plans, yeah. Come, yeah, run it through me first. In fairness, what would you I can't done, blame them. I can't blame them. Do you know why I can't blame them? Because they do ring me up quite often and say, Alistair, this needs doing, and I'm like, just sort it. I don't care. Don't you don't need to ring yeah, me for yeah. every little bit. All right. <laughs> like I'm I'm like that. Yeah. Um, I'm like just just fix it. I know I trust them. I know they're not going to rip me off. Just fix it. Um, so, so they were just doing kind what of, they were told. They were, it's kind of my fault, probably, yeah. But, I mean, would, typically, would you challenge building regs? If building regs... I would. You would have done. I would, no. Now you would, but before would you have? Yeah. Would oh, you, I'm, I'm, I'm building very... regs said this, would you have gone, no, I don't agree? Well, I'd, I'd, ask to see, I'd ask to see where the rules are, because the thing is, I've, I've dealt with a lot with um, big organisations in the past in my previous industry, and um, sometimes they get it wrong. Well, they're like they're reading from a rule book that they don't perhaps understand, and they don't particularly have the... If you've got somebody that's new to building regs and they're not, they've never really been on site, and they don't really understand sometimes. Mm. And sometimes they say stuff that just doesn't make logical sense uh, and from a building point of view isn't correct. So you just have to not, not challenge it in a dickish way, but challenge it in a way, look, actually, okay, can you show me that regulation where it says that's got to be done or something like that. Um, but it's, it's about how you handle the situation, I think it's really important. All right, cool. So should we, uh, should we talk about building regs? Uh, not building regs, we just talked about that. Corporate gains. Should we talk about uh, capital gains? Oh, ca capital gains, sorry, man. I'm, I'm all over the place today. Capital gains tax. So just to give a little bit of context uh, for this, if, if any of you don't know, so uh, we're actually right now in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, Are we? In, in, in case you weren't aware. Uh, and what the government have done is, in order to, uh, because they basically closed down the economy, pretty much. Well, actually, they've not. Um, they have and they haven't, but it's busier out there than ever. I guess we're maybe second lockdown, but there's more shops open and there's more businesses opening than before. I can tell you that. I don't much. think people are taking this lockdown anywhere near as seriously no. as the. As I, I've got to agree when we when we drive it around and things. But also, a lot of shops have stayed open under essential, like Marks and Spencers are open because they sell food. Okay. But then it means that you can go and buy clothes. And you can, you know what I mean. So yeah. a lot of shops are still open. Uh, well, yeah, they are absolutely. I was having this conversation this morning with somebody. Where I was driving through Bedford, and there's so many shops open, and like they're just not essential. Like, do you remember the greet, first thing, greeting card shops? There was a greeting card shop open. How's that essential? Like, yeah, well, it's essential for them, isn't it? Essential for yeah, their business. Essential for their business. Yeah. I agree with that. Essential for their livelihood. Um, but um, the first time, if you remember, like, a lot of the shops. I remember McDonald's in particular yeah. came out and said. We're going to go above and beyond the rules. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're going to close now, and everyone was like, "Oh, well." Now the shops are doing the opposite, and they're all trying to wangle away of them of course, staying open. Yeah. Anyway, as a result, they've obviously had to give bounce back loans, sea yeah. bills, all that sort of stuff. And go on. Have you heard about the the, the government are up are, are are up in the bounce back loan? So if you previously applied for a bounce back loan, as of the. 20th of November, I think it is. I'm sure it's next Monday. 
um, as of 20th of November, I'm sure it is, you can, if you got a bounce back loan, but you didn't take the full 50,000 pound, you can then reapply and get that difference. You can get, you can up it now. Oh wow. So if you only got a 15,000 pound bounce back loan, you can now apply for that additional 35,000 um, pound. It's yeah. been announced, I saw it the other day. Really good. Cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, so they've basically printed a trillion pounds. Cool, man. I'd love to have that machine, but... Oh, it'll be good, wouldn't it? And they need to get that back. Yeah, yeah. Right, because obviously they're giving away a lot of that. So, one of the uh, industries, obviously the taxes, we're all talking about, you know, taxes are going to yeah. rise and stuff. Um, of course, what does the government, who does the government love to hit in these kind of times? Capitalists. Uh, landlords. Yeah. Land or capitalists, capitalists, if you want to say. Cap but landlords in particular. Yeah. So they've just announced, uh, they've put out a 131 page document about capital gains tax changes. Cool. And, and, and it, uh, Now, I just want to stress as well at the moment, this is only a proposal. Okay, fine. So, and one of my theories actually, I'll come to, I've got a theory about this. Go on. Might be totally wrong. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you? Go on, go on. All right. So they're bringing in these changes that may come in probably with the next budget, probably March sort of time, mm -hmm. which basically, if you sell your house, your capital gains tax in many cases is going to double. You know, they're, they're, they're really raising it. So at the moment, the rates are uh, 10 or 18% for basic taxpayers. At for the moment. Rate? That's, that's high. Yes. That's a tax on, on profit, isn't it? It's lower than normal tax. Well, yeah, fine. It's tax on profit. It's lower than 20%, yeah, but it's still high. 10 and 18 for basic and 20 and 28 for higher rate taxpayers. Right. Depending on what you're selling, residential property is higher. But what they're planning on doing is bringing it in line with normal income tax. So if you're a forty percent, that's ridiculous. It was capital gains tax is going to be forty percent. If that you're forty five, forty five percent. I do know. I've, I've been seeing people talking about this on all the forums and stuff like that. But I've not really been paying much attention to it at the minute, um, uh, and I really need to. But yeah, that that's utter ridiculous. The other thing they're going to do at the moment is, and also in their plans, if you die. The, so, so let's say you um, you die, and you've got all these capital gains, but you haven't sold it, so you haven't claimed them. Mm -hmm. You then give them on to your children or whoever, yeah. and they get it's inheritance. They get inheritance, inheritance tax, tax, and the capital yeah. gains tax disappears because you never sold it. What they're planning on doing with these new plans is you're going to pass along the capital gains tax and the inheritance. Of course they are. So when you're dead and dying, and you're you're buried in the ground, not only the battered the shit out of you all your life, they wait till you're in the grave and then they kick you in the nuts again. But it actually right. means that in certain situations, you could end up paying, like to bring out say a hundred grand's worth of equity, you end up might paying more tax than you actually bring, you actually do bring you, out. And, and do the government wonder why people try and play the system? They wonder why people like, businesses try and uh, avoid tax legally. They wonder why. This is why, of course it's why. It's just ridiculous. They're just constantly battering uh, people that want to be successful in life, people that want to actually be away from a job um, and, and want to be entrepreneurs and, 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 uh, and, own, and own assets. Yeah. Um, it's, I, don't, I just don't agree with it. And I, I would rather move to like some of these countries where you don't have any of this sort of issue. So let's um, say you're a landlord right now, you own a few properties, yeah. what are you thinking? Again, you're thinking, get out of the industry. Sell. Sell, get out of the industry. Right, yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people right now, a lot of landlords and stuff that, are, that own properties are gonna be thinking, right, let's, let's, let's sell now Lord, yeah. before the capital gains tax comes in in March. However, this is my potential theory. Might, might not be the case. But do you think it's possible that this is just a big BS? In order to keep the housing market yeah. going, I was just thinking when you when you asked that question, what's the what's the what would you do if you're a landlord? I knew that's where you were going because yeah. I, I agree with you now. Actually, yeah, I do. I think that's it could be to uh, keep the market going. Put a bit of fear out there. There's yeah. nothing better than a bit of fear to get people motivated, is there? No. If you're um, thinking, oh, if I sell now, it's going to be beneficial. Yeah. Or you're going you're to sell. It's going to get pull more <laughs> people selling. They're, they're all, we know they want sales because they've cut stamp duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and they've made lending a little bit easier, and they've they've backed lending and things like that so they could very easily just come out in a few months time and just go okay we decided against it and now they've got all these sales over over the next few they've got a more detailed plan coming out in january <laughs> of I course believe. they have um, do, do you know when you start looking into how the government operate right they're actually it's, it's just a big game of chess isn't it it's literally they're just constantly moving pawns and all that sort of stuff to get to get to their out out their out, out sort of their outcome and the more you look into it the more you realize that actually mm, there's more fishiness but here's, here's the thing though right because I actually don't think 
This, is, this isn't going to affect people that know what they're doing. No. This isn't going to affect you. This isn't going to affect me. This isn't going to affect uh, the guys watching this because yeah. you're going you're gonna to buy smartly. So if you buy, for example, through a limited company, yeah, yeah. which, to be honest, is already the yeah. best way of doing the, the, it. I agree with that. Um, but bear in mind, there's, how many, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of landlords out there that have been landlords before it was beneficial to buy in a limited company. Yeah. It's them that's going to get hit hardest, I think. Yeah. Um, well, Samuel owns most of his... Yeah, so he's going to get hit way. hard. But he's only going to get hit hard if he sells. If he, yeah. So, if you don't, if he doesn't, if he, because we teach buying to yeah, keep yeah, for yeah. cash flow, to don't keep we? Cash flow, yeah. So if you're buying for cash flow, I, all the strategies that we teach, I don't think it's going to affect. Mm. If you think it through, it's not really going to affect. Logically, it's not, all. is it? Because we, we we do teach buying a limited company, so it won't affect that. If you if you're buying to sell, if you're a developer, yeah, you, you're going to buy it. You're going to buying it to sell. You'll just pay corporation tax, nineteen yeah. percent. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. No issues. If you're buying it in a limited company, you're okay. If you're doing like a buy, refurbish, refinance, yeah. you're okay because yeah. you're refinancing to get your money out. Yeah, yeah, you're not leaving, and you're not um, you're, unless you're going to flip it. Um, so, like for instance, that's made me now start thinking about Bedford. It doesn't matter; it's a limited company. But Bedford, I've got I've got multiple exits. Whether I could just sell it, whether I could refinance it. Um, and then a couple of other deals that I'm doing as well. Always, aim, you always start off aiming to sell. Yeah, of course. Always yeah, aim yeah, yeah. to sell, and then you can you can relook really at it if that changes. Yeah. Um, but I don't, you know, people are making a big hoo ha song and dance about it. I don't think it's going to affect. But we've most... seen this. We've seen this before, right? We saw it with Section Twenty Four. Section Twenty Four come out, and then it was all over the media. Mm. It was going crazy. People were panicking. People were like getting out of the industry, doing whatever, but then section 24 come, but then over here, another rule little comes out, another little rule comes out that sort of negates section 24. Well, it made it a lot easier it made it to buy easier. for a limited company. Yeah, and this, it still is easy to buy for a limited company. There, there will be a way around it, I reckon, and well, there really your is. job as, a, as a, uh, an entrepreneur and as somebody who is wanting to achieve things in life is to find that loophole. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing wrong with loopholes. I love loopholes. I, I'm not I'm not one of these people that are so held up by red tape. I, I will find a loophole if I can find the, a loophole. The thing is, you're not, you're not even finding a loophole. Yeah. All you're doing is what, the, for whatever reason, yeah. the government want us to own properties in limited companies. Yeah, yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Because they keep doing things to make it. So it's not, it's you're not doing a loophole, you're just doing what the government wants. Yeah. If you're paying a lot of tax, it's mm. because you're not doing what they want. It's like electric cars. But the, they want you to have not, an electric there car. There was an article come out yesterday from 2030, there's no more petrol and diesel being sold as new vehicles. I saw that, yeah. Just electric. That's interesting. That's only ten years away. And then suddenly, all the tax breaks will disappear. Yeah. For, for those things, but you've got ten years to make the most of. Of, of you know, I haven't got an electric car personally. I know no, you don't I. either. No. But from a tax point of view, it would make sense. Of course, yeah, of course. But the problem is with electric cars, the technology is not there yet. It, I think it is now. It's there, but they don't last that long. Okay, so you, unless you want to stop every fucking under every hundred mile and plug in. Nah. Dude, they don't last that long. Two fifty. Okay, but you're not gonna. Okay, okay, that's better than what I thought. But you're not gonna drive from here to Scotland on one charge. You have to stop for you an hour, stop. hour and a half. Or for half like an hour. Yeah. Half an hour full charge. But then, then as long as the infrastructure's there, so obviously ten years is a long way away. As long as the infrastructure's there in place for charging stations, because I know I'm starting to see it now. Most car parks have got two or three plug-in mm. points. Um, so Even the new houses that we built, we're building them with plug-in plug points. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it, it, I'm sure the infrastructure will come. Um, but yeah, that's good. Interesting. It is interesting. Mm. So, so what, what overall thoughts on the cap on the capital? I mean, obviously, you know what? Listen, I, it's bad news for any. If I was sitting there, if I owned. If I was like Samuel, and yeah, I was planning yeah. on selling. Selling, yeah. Um, but, but then, the thing is, I don't think, it doesn't matter, because as long as you're not, plan as long as you don't need to sell it, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you need to release equity, just refinance, refinance it. Refinance it, yeah, as long as the value's there. So just keep, just stock. Yeah. Not, the, only, the only reason it would be an issue, again, is that I think it's going to hit amateur landlords. Unfortunately, again, it's hitting all those accidental landlords. It's seen that way, doesn't it? It's seen way. It seems to, the government are trying to get everyone to be professional landlords. and get Or rid of, not landlords. Yeah, either make the barrier to entry too high, make it too difficult to stop people just sort of coming in and putting a little bit of money into it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And then my, they can all talk my, news, doom and gloom. Yeah, well, my, my thoughts on it are not really from an educated point of view on uh, corporate gains, um, capital gains tax because I don't know enough about it. And um, that's the sort of thing I would just speak to my accountant about, to be quite honest. I wouldn't know enough about it. But I, 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 I agree. I mean, like, listen, I've got, I've actually got a meeting with my accountant tomorrow to okay. talk about it from a development point of view. Yeah, yeah. How is it going to, is it going to, I don't think it will, but I just yeah. want to, I just want to check. So yeah, it's always yeah. worth having an accountant or an expert that you can speak to. I mean, we've, we've only got a, we're in the, in the property business. Yeah, yeah. We're property investors, not accountants. So we've yeah, not got yeah, an, yeah. an accountant's knowledge. Yeah. We can only, 
act on sort of what we've told and from yeah. our experience what we're doing. It is quite funny because I, I see this a lot where, um, particularly online, uh, people are very critical if you don't, if you're in business, they're very critical if you don't know certain things like about accountancy, like, like you should know that because you're in business. Well, why should you know it? All you need to know is who to speak to. You need to know the right person, the right point of contact. Um, and, and for instance, um, capital gains tax, I don't know that much about it to, to stand here and make a qualified opinion or a judgment on it. Um, I know how to find the house and make money from the houses. My accountant's job is to maximise my income and profit from that deal with regards to taxes. Um, so yeah. where, where you should know, or just have a good relationship with your accountant, yeah. but where you should know is when you need to do it in a certain way when you're setting out. It's important that you've got a rough idea, but but the other thing you can do is you can say, look, Mr. Accountant, yeah. I want to buy this development stock. What's the best way of doing it? Well, the, the thing is, my relationship with my accountant is very much like that. He's yeah. a developer himself. He, he's That's got, what he's, you need. He's got plenty of houses, um, and he's he's been doing it quite a few years. So for him, me and him, we, we, we love chatting because we're both doing it, and it's a very easy conversation. I can just ring up, Ian, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm looking at. How can we do it so it's most tax Where I've made mistakes in the past, when I first got started in business, I would do something, I'd go in and, sh and they'd go, ah, oh, you do it, yeah, you you're like, you're it like the, yeah, yeah. I'm so, a doer. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 there's nothing wrong with that, there's it's time and place, but you are uh, a reactive as opposed to proactive in the same I've learned a bit now, yeah, yeah. so I'm less so. So you do, but, you've got to get a deal done and then you go to the account and say, hey, there you are, that's what I've done, yeah, fix it. <laughs> well, I, I remember literally when I, when, when, I, when I first started it, I, mean, I, was, I was only, a kid, yeah, but really. there's nothing wrong with that. When I first started, I just used to throw my receipts in like a plastic bag, yeah. and I'd take them into the accountant. I'd go, right, this is how much I've made. This is what I've spent. You, you sort, sort, it you sort yeah, it out, yeah. and he'd go through. You can put that through. You can't put that through. You can. Yeah. And he'd have to literally do it all for me. So uh, I mean, I put every receipt through I can possibly get in there. Everything. If it's a bit, if it's a genuine business expense, yeah. Everything. If Everything. It's, if it's a genuine business, if it's a genuine business expense, yeah. <laughs> right. It's now time for this. <laughs>time for the uh, Q&A session of this week's show. Now, as always, I do a Facebook Live on Property Investors with Simon Lee and I ask for your questions. Uh, you can also send them to us via Instagram at Alistair underscore Cunningham and uh, at Russell Leeds. Very simple, very simple. Okay, uh, so we have a question here from Colette uh, Albright. Hey Colette, I hope you're well. I know Colette. I know we know How Colette very well. Colette? We know Colette very well. Um, hey, Alistair Cunningham, uh, I'm looking into doing rent to rent HMO with a person in the UK um, who's already managing three rent to rent in his company. He's looking for funds for his next rent to rent and my question is, what is the best way to make an agreement or joint venture with him? Would it be number one, to form a company with 50-50 split or a joint venture agreement between both companies executed by a solicitor? Uh, so yeah, what, would you, what do you think? Um, so she's looking to invest in somebody who's doing rent to rent in the UK um, and uh, collects uh, from Jersey? I'm sure she's Jersey, I'm sure she is. Well, that's um, great. I want to I be her business partner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway. Um, so, she's looking to do, to do uh, rent to rent uh, with somebody here in the UK, and she wants to know the best way how to structure that deal. Would you do it as a loan, a loan agreement, or would you do it as a set a limited company up together and have 50-50 split, or would you do it as just a, a JV? How would you do it? Um, I, th I think it depends on how serious yeah. I was about doing business with that person. So, if yeah. it was like, we were, okay, we're going to go all out for this, then I probably would set up a, a proper limited yeah, company. I agree with that. If it was if it was a, a side thing, I, I'm, I mean, listen, I've done both. So yeah. it, very, it very much depends on C the circumstances. Calais, it, it depends very much on the circumstances, how much money is involved and what you're expecting out of it. But as with all JV's uh, uh, partnerships, it's a case of sit down, have a conversation with them, a blank sheet of paper. This is what I want, this is what they want, this is how much I'm investing, this is how much you're investing, and then work out it from there. But whatever you do, make sure it's drafted legally so you're protected. Yeah, um, I've got a question here. Go uh, this was a comment from the YouTube videos. This is from Aralel Oddy. Thanks guys, a question around deal sourcing. What should you set the final fee for your first ever deal that you present to an investor they always say between two and five grand but that seems way too big a margin okay uh, first ever finders fee it depends it will it depends on many things how much is a deal how much what's the ROI on a deal is that a good deal is that a bad deal is that a mediocre deal obviously you're not gonna be selling bad deals but it depends on the deal okay next it depends on your experience and credibility obviously if you've got more experience at finding great deals you can charge a higher fee um, however if you're brand new to it perhaps sell that deal for free 
don't charge them, but in return, ask them for a testimonial. Ask them for uh, a review of you finding that deal, and that will give you credibility. So look, it's much, very much down to you. Um, personally, nowadays, I don't sell deals for less than £2,000, um, generally two to £5,000, but I've got a lot more experience and a lot more credibility than perhaps you have at the minute. Okay, so just make sure you're getting It'll, a fair, fair whack. Supply and demand, isn't it? Of course it is, How do yeah. you price anything? Yeah. How do you price a burger and chips? How do McDonald's price a burger and chips? What people pay for it? Supply and demand, yeah, 100%. Um, but the relationship's more important than the money at this stage for you. You want to be building a happy investor. That's more important than getting 1,500 quid or 500 quid, okay? Quite often, we've recommended on this show, and I stand by it, doing your first deal for free. free? Yeah. Get a video testimonial, powerful. Uh, one more question, and this is from S. Ahmed. How do you secure a joint venture if it's your first ever one? Most investors do not seem interested in working with newbies. Uh, is due diligence part of the deal? To, is is the right due diligence of the deal enough to convince the right investor? Listen, I'm a, Mr. S. Ahmed. Um, the your first ever JV is going to be a difficult one because people don't know you, like you, and trust you. Okay, so you need to build up relationships with people. And the, the first JV, uh, like I know Russell was a close family member. It might be somebody close to your network you already work with. Um, so all I would do is keep talking to people, keep keep putting yourself out there, make sure that the numbers you're presenting are accurate, um, and it will happen. But the first one's always the hardest, and then you can just replicate it and do it time and time again. Yep, fair. Can yeah. I ask you a question? Go on. Is that grey hair coming out in your it beard? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. Is, it, is it in your hair as well? Yeah. It is, it is a bit, I've, not, I've not got any grey in my hair so much. There's some hair. But, like, do you know, yesterday, I I'd not sh I was I was not shaving. I'd, I had a, a little bit of a beard yesterday. It was like six, seven mil long. It was so grey, mate. So I had to <laughs> get it off, get it off, get it off. I wouldn't worry too much, though. Why not? Uh, because it won't be long before it's gone. I know. I can, I can I know. Say, it's I not. Know. Don't stress. I'm not, I'm not don't stressing. Stress. He's stressed, but it's, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Don't it's stress good. me too much because it falls out when I get stressed. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that bombshell. It's time to end, guys. Thanks so much for uh, tuning in. We'll be back next week. Um, so I'm not, I, I don't want to say the day because as I'm filming this, we are looking at changing the day. So this might be a different day. Oh, I think it probably maybe. will be. Maybe. But maybe. we'll be back every week. We're here. See you next week. See you guys.